Good afternoon, all my Stitch Roadie friends. Thanks for stopping by. I wanted to start this particular segment off with my new cross stitch cabinet, and I can't tell you how excited I am. It's a Hemis cabinet from Ikea, and it literally took G probably a good seven hours to put the thing together. And uh, it had a gazillion pieces, if you've ever uh, put together any of Ikea's furniture, it's um, amazing. <laughs> the instructions, like like probably 10 or 15 different languages and lots of drawings and pictures and smiley face and frowny faces but um, it went together perfectly and so today I wanted to start this segment off with what I did with my organization uh, and then we'll get into giveaways we'll, I have a lot of those we'll get into um, whips, dreams all of that stuff uh, going on in my Stitch Roadie life. So this cabinet was stuck on the Ever Given, which is that ship that was stuck in the Suez Canal. So for several months I've been trying to get it, um, and there was none available locally. And finally, um, all of that cargo that was on that ship was released, and I was able to get one and have it delivered. Uh, I did not pay to have it put together. <laughs> you might want to think about that. Luckily, G could do, could figure it out. And he said, with the million pieces that it comes in, that although any one piece doesn't seem very um, sturdy, or <laughs> he said the engineer who designed this knew what they were doing because the interconnecting pieces are like a big Lego block, you know, sculpture, and so it's very strong. I wanted this particular style of cabinet, and I looked for antique ones, I just, you know, all over the place I looked, and sure there were this style on Wayfair and Overstock.com and all those other furniture places, but I didn't want to spend uh, two or three thousand dollars. I just didn't want to spend that kind of money. And this was three hundred and some. I knew I wanted a cabinet with glass on top and drawers on the bottom. I did not like having my cross stitch kind of scattered all over in my closet, on the floor. Um, I still have my whip, uh, not my whip, my um, uh, you know, charts that are already put together and ready to go um, in that antique uh, magazine holder. And I still have the tool uh, box that holds the whips that have already been started. Uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But this way I could um, have a display area on top. And so I put some you know, my antique uh, thread holders, and I have my hoops and frames up on top, and then I bought these, um, a couple of these magazine holders to hold my charts, and I bought, I already had uh, four binders filled with charts. It really does make you realize how much you have. And then I found this other um, holder at the Office Max that ho will hold, you know, this is perfect for my 5x7 charts and the little ones. And so I can kind of flip through those. In the top drawer, I just have like loose hoops and frames. The second drawer is totally filled with my uh, fabrics. And I did not realize how much fabric. I have a whole drawer of fabrics of 40 count, 32 count, 28 count. Um, and so now I'm going to be able to get to it and see it better. And then the bottom drawer is filled with my project bags. And I have a lot of project bags, let me tell you. They're all so beautiful. 
I just love having it all in one spot. And when I roll over in bed, because my cross stitch is stored in my bedroom, I can just, it's so encouraging to see everything in here. And so I just love this cabinet. Um, it's turned out to be, um, and, and G says it fits here perfectly on this wall, and it fits in the room really well. So stay tuned. Let's get on to the next segment. But let me tell you, I'm really happy now. Uh, I feel, you know, it's that moment where you feel organized. The O word. That, that usually isn't a part of my life. Um, so I feel very organized with my cabinet. Well, we're back. And I hope you have a cup of tea or coffee or a cold drink because I'm going to be jabbering for a little while. I have some updates. I have um, some haul. I have some dreams. I have some stitchy kindness. And I'm sharing it all with you. One of the things that has come to my attention, and I'll have to, uh, exp I don't know how to even explain it, is that um, sometimes uh, Google does some something different. And back in the day when I was just writing a blog, which is the Woolly Mammoth blog, um, one day I woke up and uh, a thousand subscribers had been unsubscribed. And there was really no explanation. Um, the whole blogging community was in an uproar, but you know, it's, it's wasted energy. You know, you're talking to an algorithm with somebody behind it, but they really, they really don't care about the little people down there, you know? So, um, I want you to be sure that you are subscribed. Uh, if you click the bell, you get notifications. I received some weird, weird comments on the blog this last month. And luckily, one of you was giving me the heads up ahead that said, oh, that person's back. I mean, it, some of it's just disgusting. And I was able to go into the back door, figure it out, and so on my blog, if you aren't a subscriber, you're not going to be able to comment. That, it, that used to be wide open to anybody who wanted to comment, but it's kind of a weird world out there. And so I figured out how to shut that door. I love reading the comments. So I hope you will um, make sure you're subscribed so that you can leave a comment and we can have a conversation. And that goes the same with this uh, Stitch Roadie YouTube channel and the Quilt Roadie YouTube channel. It's it's just really, um, now those two I have not figured out how to do that, but um, I have to be diligent because there's some weird stuff that shows up and I'm not real comfortable with it. <laughs> but, okay, that's all about that. I, it's 105 today. It, the expected high today is 105, so all the shades are closed. Every day, G and I are grateful that our air conditioning is working, um, but 105, and I just got back from having a cup of coffee with our realtor, and that no, we're not moving, but the realtor that we had um, when we bought this house, just to catch up, I really think she's a sweetheart and enjoyed conversation with her. and. And it was hot. We were in the shade sitting outside the coffee shop, and it was still hot. 105. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Hopefully this will be the last hot spell for the summer, but I don't know. I don't know. I'm kind of a little bit worried because our camping trip that's scheduled later this month there is a fire that started near there, and right now they're on evacuation one. But, you know, who knows? A lot can happen in a week. Maybe it'll be better, but, um, yeah, it's been a crazy summer, hasn't it? Crazy summer. So I have all the shades closed, so the sun won't be beaten in here. That's why maybe it seems a little bit more 
moody. <laughs> moody. <laughs> and uh, so that's what I did today. Um, this week, uh, Cheryl from uh, Stitching with the Sisterlies, uh, uh, one half of that uh, tag team, came over um, not only to um, kind of observe and talk about the quilting machine I have, but also to talk about how I sew, do the sewing method with freehand uh, stitching. And, you know, I kind of do it all. I do a majority of mine in hand, but I'll use a hoop and I use a frame. I use the Elan frame. Uh, it's just kind of what I'm in the mood for, really. It's what I'm in the mood for. I did do a little bit of stitching. Let's see, I've been working on my um, Fat Quarter Shop Booze and Bat Sal. And I don't know the count of this, but I know that it's Ada. Um, but I just, I love how the white is showing up on it. Can you really see that close? Let me see. Yeah. So much fun. So we're on step two of that. And I also worked a little bit on Jack. He's so cute. He is so cute. One of the things that uh, Cheryl was talking about uh, that concerned was her neck and um, back, how they get challenged with not only quilting but stitching. And I have to say that that is why I use always a stitching pillow. Now you can use any pillow, really. Any pillow is going to work that will fit on your lap. But this stitching pillow is um, there's a tutorial if you Google uh, Quilt Roadie Stitching Pillow. I actually give a tutorial on how to make this kind of biscornu type. And it's fun to make. But it takes the stress off of your neck and your shoulders and your wrists and forearms when you're stitching. Because I'll rest my, when I sit back, I rest my project on here and it just keeps your head more aligned, your spine more in alignment. And um, so check that out if you, you know, if you need to uh, take care of yourself. Okay, mail. Let's see, what did I do here? I ordered this. You say, what is this? It's actually uh, on Amazon. And it's a uh, knitting, it's for knitters. You know, it's play, it has place for needles and threads and stuff, but uh, you know, you could store anything in it. But the reason, it's kind of a hard, hard cover. And it was Becca from Sambri Stitches who um, sent me the link off of Amazon. And I'll try to remember to put the link in the description box. It's for my folding lamp. Uh, the halo lamp. It fits perfectly in here and then it's protected when you're traveling. Yeah. Really excited about that because I take my lamp everywhere with me because when you get to my age your eyesight just it requires magnification, it requires light. You know and um, so I'm doing I, I'm taking it everywhere with me. It's like you pack your toothbrush and you pack your lamp and magnifier. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. So, have you guys been busy? Oh, uh-huh. We are all such enablers. That's all I can say. Um, I think you would have to be a hermit and not be connected to the internet at all to be not affected or encouraged to go out and get new charts. When I organized that cabinet, I was like 
I had that, I had a moment, I had a moment where I went, oh, this is a whole lot of stitching to get done. What am I, crazy? But then I thought, I love it all. I love it all. And when I look at Instagram and I look at Facebook and I watch Floss Tube, I am just inspired. I am encouraged, enabled, inspired, and in love with it all all. And that's just part of the journey. It's just part of the journey. And I have decided to accept that journey. What I did come to the conclusion this last week was that I have whips that are, um, someday I'll do a, whip, a total whip parade that is only about the whips I have. But I have been finishing some things because, um, they're not that far off from being finished and then I think I should just make that something I touch every day. You know, they're those projects that are huge that you don't see the end in sight, but I have several whips where the end is, you could almost taste it. You could almost taste the end. And um, so I've decided that you know, and we keep changing. If you watch Floss Tube, everybody, it's like, when they do a Floss Tube, they make new rules for themselves. It's like, one day, you've got to touch a whip on its birthday. The next day, someone's doing a different whip every day. And then every month, there's a name for the whip month. So it's just kind of funny how we, and we're, and there's no wrong in it. It's what works in the moment. So there's no judgment to it. It's, you just have to embrace it and see what you feel like. And I know the few that I have finished in the last two months, it felt pretty darn good. It felt pretty darn good. So I'm going to continue with looking through the whip pile and choosing one to concentrate on, not monogamously, because as I've said, the only thing in my life I'm monogamous about is G. Um, but I will pick a whip out and say, this one I'm going to touch a lot. Not even every day, but I'm going to touch it a lot till it's done. And then I'll keep working on the things that I feel like, because I am totally an emotional stitcher. Yes, yes, emotional stitcher. That means I have to feel the love in the moment to stitch it. It's I can't force myself by spinning a wheel. I can't force myself by a schedule. Oh my gosh, that is, you know. My dad used to tell me, Anna, you know, you'd be a straight-A student if you actually went in the library. You know, and I'm always the night before. I'm a powerful person the night before a deadline. <laughs> I'm a powerful person that way. And so I, I have to embrace that part of my personality. And I, I encourage all of you to not try to change who you are, but embrace who you are and see how it works within your crafting world. Um, because that's where the journey will be the most exciting. And that is where you'll accomplish the most, is if you just really embrace your own personality. We are all individuals. We have to be, to love ourselves first. And it's fun to try things, but I never look at anything as a failure. I guess that's, um, it's kind of like houses. You know, each house, and we have moved a lot, each house has given us a lesson in the next house. And it's the same with cross stitch. Each cross stitch gives us a lesson for the next one. And is that not the way the world should run? It, it should be where you in, embrace what you love in that moment. So there you go. That's my philosophical thought for the day. I received some amazing um, stitchy kindness, and let me tell you, 
I received some Prairie Schooler Santas. I forgot to bring them up here. They're downstairs in my Prairie Schooler basket in my Prairie Schooler living room where I touch them every single day. And so thank you so much for those Prairie Schooler charts. They are awesome. And um, I'm having the best time with that. And that's, and, and I think, the reason I'm accomplishing that is that my only agenda is when I finish one, I start one. I don't have to finish one in any given time. It's just when I finish one, I start one. And it's kind of, it's kind of made me keep moving forward. Um, I also, man, this was, this was amazing. Carol, L lovely, lovely, lovely note, a lovely letter. And I want you to know that these letters, I almost don't feel like I deserve them. The, the love, I try to embrace the love in these notes that are sent to me. Uh, but sometimes I think, how did I get so lucky? How did I get so lucky? And I save them. I have a box with all the note cards and notes in them because I know there's going to come a day when I might need a boost or, you know, you, you know, life is a series of ups and downs and you know that you love to ride that wave. But you know there's a trough. You know, I can remember when we were sailing, there were some times when we'd be stuck out in heavy seas, and the trough was so deep that you all you could see was water on either side. And you were going sideways up the hump, because otherwise you, you'd be sunk. So there's an angle, the sailboat has to go up and over that and then go down and then up and over and go down. And sometimes you're in the trough and you can't see anything but water. And then I'll read these notes that I've saved. And, I, and it tells me, I'm going to see the light, I'm going to see the sun eventually. I just have to ride in the trough for a while. Yeah, so I love these. I saved them. But this was like crazy, crazy. <laughs> I feel like Carol thinks, uh, you know, she's like uh, encouraging me to no end for new, new starts. But first of all, I am taking this on quilt retreat. I know that, um, that many of you have no idea about quilting. But this, she saw this panel and thought of me. And... I am going to make a quilt out of this because it is a hoot and a half. So this is what's called a panel. And so you cut these uh, squares out and then you can do any kind of piecing in between for quilting and you can make it into a quilt. So this panel is all these Christmas gnomes. So cute. So cute. Now I'm going to have to pick my fabric out. Oh, I can just see a really cute checkerboard. Oh. And I have a quilt retreat coming up next month. So, and I decided not to make it a stressful retreat, but to make it something where it's fun. And so I think I'm going to be doing a lot of panels. So Carol must have really paid attention to my floss tubes because she nailed these project bags. Um, all the things I love, she made me four project bags. Yeah, you know what that means. New starts, but take a look at these. And they're big ones, you know, so it's going to fit like a hoop or a Q-snap in it, no problem. But look at this one with the sailboats. And the inside, the inside is got this beautiful bottle fabric in it. It's just gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, 
a Christmas one. And it has a vinyl front so you can see the inside. What can I say? This is pieced. She pieced that bee. It's, it, it's just absolutely adorable. Pieced. Pieced this quilt block sewing machine and put it on a project bag. Carol, you spoiled me rotten. You spoiled me rotten. And so I, I'm definitely starting a new start. And, and one of the reasons I'm doing a new start is because I received a package from uh, Chris, who is um, as the U flies. And I ordered here, I'm talking off the top of my head. I ordered, um, uh, if you go to her site, and I will definitely put the link, um, I ordered some of the floss rings, the photograph floss rings that she makes. And let's see, I feel like I'm missing one. Oh yeah, there it is. And I wanted, um, I, I wanted, uh, I used to have a very, very wonderful, wonderful, for those of you who are new, an absolutely perfect, wonderful dog. I mean, there was no better friend than our Enzo. He was smart. He was Funny. Oh my gosh, he was funny. He was so well behaved. He was the best camping companion. And we, when we lost him, we still have not um, fully recovered from that, I have to say. <laughs> but uh, you, those of you may not know. So Chris makes these floss rings. And um, he was a standard poodle. His name was Enzo Ferrari. Uh, although we never showed him, we uh, he came into our family from someone who breeded AKC, and um, so he had an official name, and it was and I named him Enzo Ferrari because of the book Art of Racing in the Rain. Um, that book touched my heart way before Enzo came in my life, and I met the author. And um, it was like that dog was in that book was so amazing that I knew when I read that book that if I had a dog come into my life again, his name would be Enzo Ferrari. And so Enzo came into my life and he was like, he was like no other dog we'd ever had. And we used to, when we drive over the mountain, we always stopped in Detroit Lake um, at a store uh, in Detroit Lake and we buy snacks and use a restroom and out in front of that store there was um, what we call pot man. It was a man made out of uh, terracotta pots and so every time we traveled over the mountain we would make Enzo sit next to pot man for a photograph. He did not like Pop Man. <laughs> and so here, here he is. He's leaning as far away from Pop Man as he can get. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, I don't like that guy. But he would he was such a great dog, he would do whatever we told him to. And so <laughs> He was a much better family member to us than we were to him. We made him wear hats, you know. I mean... I 
could just cry sometimes. Yeah, he was awesome. He was an awesome, awesome friend. And um, I, the, I, I miss him because he literally was in the beehive with me every day, you know. Well, and it wasn't because of me. It's because we keep snacks in the beehive. <laughs> Doggy treats in the beehive. And so I, uh, I also wanted to have one with my boys. And, and so, <laughs> there's my boys. <laughs> well, on top of the ones that I ordered, Chris sent me an extra one. It was so sweet. Oh, where did my, oh, there's my extra one. It's right in here. And it's of uh, G and I. I just love these. They're just kind of a fun floss ring. You put, you know, you put them on a ring, and um, like, because I use floss away bags. Uh, I put the bags uh, for each project on my um, ring, and then I have just something fun to do. And so here, she sent me this one. It's a sweet gift. Keep calm and stitch on. And they're sewn. She she puts a bead and a little tassel. I just love these. So I will put that link down below. I know I'm going to be missing something here. Uh, let's see. Barbara, thank you so much, Barbara, was um, shopping and was able to go to a shop uh, on her travels. And let's see, it's, um, let's see, she uh, was able to go to her favorite LNS Heritage Designs quilting and needlework in a manna. Well, that's, you know, I, I someday I need to go there. It, I have several friends who have been there. And she found this chart. And it seems like there was something else in here. Let's see here. I've always loved that chart. But the bonus chart is just as cute. And this is an Elizabeth Needlework design. Elizabeth Needlework design. Thank you so much, Barbara. Thank you so much. I have a project bag for it. <laughs> and then from Cammie, Oh my gosh, this is like crazy. This was a crazy week. Well, first of all, I am totally in awe of people who um, make cards. Like I have a friend, Becky, who's a card maker. You know, it's a whole nother craft. It's a whole nother craft. And Cami sent this absolutely adorable card, homemade card, which I'm going to display. And look at that. It's just so cute. But when she was shopping, <laughs> see, I don't even have to shop and I have new projects. She found this that just, wow, I didn't even know this existed. And this is, um, where's my glasses? This is what happens when you don't pick up your mail for a while. This is a Sam Sarah Design Studios steampunk love me some steampunk steampunk bumblebee cross stitch is that not hysterical and it came with a little package of buttons that go on it I have a project bag that that can be going into 
Well, you would think that um, that I wouldn't buy anything with everything that's on my list. But I saw this on the Whistle Stop Stitcher Designs, and I thought, I need to stitch this for a penny, our van, uh, to hang in there uh, on our camping trips, because I just thought this was the sweetest thing. And that's on the Whistle Stop Stitcher Designs. It was an Etsy shop and a PDF but download. Thank you, everybody, for all the stitchy goodness, the kindness, the oh my gosh, over the top. I've got several giveaways to do, but first I want to show you my next um, stop. What's this? Oh yeah, this is a from Whistle Stop. Okay, my next stop, start, my next start. I've decided that I'm going to start something. And because I received all these um, floss rings for my dear friend Enzo, I figured I already had a project kitted up to uh, in memory of him. And now that I have the floss rings, I'm going to go ahead and start it. And it is the Dog's Decoration by Ink Circles. Now I know many people have already stitched this and I'm doing it in the call for thread. Um, Acorns and Threads has the, this particular chart already pre-packaged with the call for threads so I didn't even have to hunt them down. It was already in a, in a baggie and I'm doing it, oh gosh, I guess I'm doing it on 36 count antique white. Ooh, baby. I'm going to need the magnifier for that, aren't I? Well, now we're at the point in the program where we're going to do some giveaways. I have so many to do. That let's just start with them. So get a piece of paper so you can write down. I should get a, peep, a piece of paper so I can write down. Um, the different um, thing. You can enter more than one. You can. It'll be interesting to see what kind of sentence you come up with because we're doing a lot at one time. I had to show you, let's see where I put it. There's no way I could make one of these. I'm not even sure what they're called. But I fell in love with it. And let's see if you can see it here. It's like a scissor fob, but it's um, it's this, it's all beaded. You know, it's got a beehive and beads and then it has the little hook on there for on your scissors so I asked one of the gals at Acorns and Threads to make it for me you know I pay her to make it and so when she was done I got the little scissor fob and she gave me the pattern back with all of these leftover beads there were like it must have only used half of the beads so the beads uh, there's a lot of beads in this particular giveaway and this is called Pocket Full of Bees. So if you're interested in that, say bees with an S. Now I, um, I'll do this one last. I finished this. I haven't FFO'd it, but I got the PDF download from, let, let me make sure that it's still, that I didn't mark it all up. I, it was a sal that I did with um, Sambri Stitches, yeah, 
called uh, by Waxing Moon Designs, and it was Search the Sky. Remember my drunk Santa, for those of you that have been around for a while? So if you're interested in Search the Sky, use the word sky. The last stitch along that I did with the Fat Quarter Shop was Sail Away, and you'll remember that I finished that and FFO'd it. Um, so that chart is available. Use the word sail. And if you can figure out how to use all these words in one sentence, you only have to leave one comment, and it'll be an interesting sentence. Now, when I was organizing my cabinet, I found um, several charts that I bought when I was in it from Goodwill when I was in Arizona, and um, these are all going to be one giveaway. And what they are is there's jar lids. So these could be small ornament type things. They're hummingbird holiday. Snowflake Santa. And a whole bunch of different borders. So these four charts are going to be one giveaway and the word you'll use is goodwill the fat quarter shop sent me some <clears throat> things to give away and normally I do a, a gift card giveaway but for some reason this box arrived with a whole bunch of stitchy goodness in it so I am passing it on and this is a new chart um, by Little Dove Designs called The Stationary Addict. Addict. And it is an awesome little chart that has all kinds of things that you'd have in your desk drawer. So if you're interested in that, if you could use the word addict, A D D I C T. And the creme de la creme was a whole pack. So starting next, I believe it's next week, you'll have to go on the Fact Quarter Shop site and please subscribe to their blog because um, they will be doing a Cross Stitch University. And for those of you that are new to Cross Stitch or know someone new to Cross Stitch, they're, uh, you know, um, they're going to do a beginning cross stitch class and you know for those seasoned that may want to to learn some tips of the trade cross stitch university that's going to be on their youtube channel um, this is a beginner's guide to cross stitch and this um, chart is so cute it is so cute it is um, love and of course, it has house and trees and love. But included in this kit, this giveaway from Fat Quarter Shop, is um, a pair of scissors. The fabric. needles, everything just go back to cross stitch school, the floss, and the chart. I mean that is, that is so generous of them. That is so generous of them. And so this
If you're interested in that, use the word university. So here we are. Bees, Sky, Sale, Goodwill, Addict, University. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. And um, I know included, I have something else included in that, which will be a surprise for that winner. So there are, that's a lot, um, a lot to take in, I know. But it'll be fun. And I hope you win. I hope each and every, each and every one of you is a winner. But I hope you're a double winner. What else can I share this week? Oh, I finished Four Wins by Kristen Hanna. Oh, it just made me just, um, it was the first book in a long time where I cried while I was reading it. Um, it was so moving and so educational. I mean, it forced me to go online and actually research historical facts about the Dust Bowl. And it made me relate that book to my own life, which was, I was shocked at that. Um, my mother always had that photograph of, uh, taken by Dorothea Lange of the woman during the Dust Bowl with the 10 kids and she just looked really tired. <laughs> Tired is only a mother who has 10 kids to feed could look. But um, the Dust Bowl, you know, affected Oklahoma, Texas. This book takes place in Texas. Oklahoma, Texas, Nebraska, Kansas. And it was basically a combination of a weather pattern and um, poor farming practices. And... I did not know that. I, I had no clue about that. I just thought it was, you know, weather. But it was mankind's effect on the environment. And, um, you know, because I tend to think during those Depression years that everybody in the Midwest fared better than those, you know, my father grew, was in New York City during the Depression and as a kid. And, and to the day he died, he didn't eat pancakes because that's all they got was they'd stand in the line for flour and his mother would make pancakes. Um, and I just always assumed, not putting two things together, that people in the Midwest did better, but not the people that suffered through the Dust Bowl. But the part that was fascinating to me is that the character in the book eventually travels to California to find work with her children in a broken down car and she ends up in you know the farming California is the food bowl of the world and um, it reminded me of where we ended up because I can remember the derogatory term at that time was oaky and in this book they say it, it, you could be from texas but the people of california called you oaky it's like they uh, everybody who came because of the dust bowl was called an oaky and when we moved to california we came across the country from new york in a dilapidated ford <laughs> and i can remember when we crossed into the into california the earliest, and I was about three, but I have a very distinct memory of stopping in Hollister, California. And we camped all the way across because my parents didn't have money to stay anywhere. Um, and I bathed in rivers and creeks. Um, but when we stopped in Hollister, the reason <laughs> memory is so embedded in my um, head is because we stopped at a Foster Freeze, which was a burger ice cream joint, and I had my very first ice cream cone. And next to that Foster Freeze 
was an orchard and there was fruit falling off the tree on the ground. I had never seen so much. And I remember picking that up into a bag, you know, and taking it to my mom. Well, we ended up uh, in the Salinas Valley, and, which is the lettuce bowl capital of the world, next to Gilroy, that's the garlic capital of the world, next to Castroville, that is the artichoke capital of the world. You know, it was agricultural um, community. And the only place that we, um, when we first got there, we lived in the projects. But the very first home that my parents bought, were actually able to buy, was in a part of town that people there called Oki Town. Because that was where supposedly all the people from the Dust Bowl settled. And everyone had to, on the street that my parents, because we were an interracial family, everyone on that street had to sign a paper that it was okay for us to buy a home on that street. Yeah. And you know what? All of those people signed that paper. It was okay. You know, because I think you know, you know the hardships. The hardships, they were already relegated to a certain part of town, and it was a combination of people working their fingers to the bone to try to create new lives and new families, and they were very accepting of us. And I remember having lots of fun in that neighborhood. The kids, we all ran around. I, it, it was a kind of an idyllic spot. You know, considering that the rest of the town looked down on that part of town. Yeah. Oh, I babbled. I babbled. But The Four Winds, it was the first book in a long time that made me actually cry. So if you have a chance and you're looking for a read, I mean, there were some parts that I was going, what? But, oh, I just love her writing. I love her writing. Okay, this is probably way too long. Remember, please subscribe. Please click on that notification bell so you get notified and enter those giveaways. Thank you for hanging out with me.